So the months of June, July and August are probably the most difficult for me when it comes to landscape photography and I'm probably not alone in that respect. The early starts are really ridiculously early. This morning sunrise was five o'clock which isn't too bad but when you factor in traveling maybe an hour, two hours, it uh, begins to get a little bit unreasonable. So this morning I've come to a lovely piece of ancient semi-natural woodland. Now I've been here before, I've not come for anything specific, um, but I'm just going to walk around and see what I can find. Don't you just love the English Bluebell Woodland? Well, I'm sorry to say that on the face of it, this does look like a typical woodland bluebell patch. And it's absolutely fantastic to the eye, but unfortunately there is an invader that's got into these bluebells. And if you look closely, you'll see that the Spanish bluebell has got some influence on many of these bluebells. If you look at the flower heads, you'll see that the flowers are not off to one side, which is typical of the native bluebell. They're actually all the way around in many cases. The plant's a lot more robust, and often the stamens aren't that creamy, typical color that we expect from our native variety. So sadly, whilst these look fantastic, they're not our own. So whilst we're on the subject of invaders, I thought I'd just show you this. This is a really sad state in our woodlands. As you can see, we've got bluebells, we've got red campion, we've got some lovely buckler ferns, um, common nettle, but all around, everywhere, and I've been here in this woodland on an earlier video and I've said this about another patch of the woodland about a mile that way. The rest of the vegetation is all Himalayan balsam, and all these other plants, I know we've talked about the hybridisation between the Spanish bluebell, but um, all the other woodland plants are really suffering at the expense of this species. It really is doing damage. And down here, underneath my feet, is the opposite leaved golden saxifrage. And that's one of our ancient woodland indicator species. And eventually, these things are going to ruin this woodland floor. The key with this particular plant is to either pull it up and uh, get rid of it before it sets seed and uh, establishes itself again for another season. But having said that, the seeds that are already in the ground can lay dormant for anything up to three years. So quite a lot of work, probably an impossible task to rectify the damage that this plant is doing to this woodland. It's quite sad, really. I found my first composition and uh, it's a group of buckler ferns and what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on just one of the main fronds that comes out from the from the base. Um, compositionally it's really nice it's more of an abstract than anything else and what I've done is I've, I've made sure that the central rib of the frond runs from the top left hand part of the frame to the bottom right just to create a more dynamic feel. Now I am wrestling a bit with the light, um, the sunlight now has crept above the hillside behind me so this fern is getting dappled light on it which is not ideal but I'm managing to shield it um, with my body so that the, the, I, I get more of an even spread of soft light. Ideally um, I would be shooting this in much more softer light conditions but if I, if I get rid of the sunlight with my body it seems absolutely fine but it's a lovely image. In terms of aperture um, I'm on f11 um, which is just enough to give me enough depth of field. The, the frond itself is very very difficult in that you try to arrange it so that it's nice and um, parallel with the film with it sorry with the sensor but the trouble with ferns is that you can do that with the central rib, you can get that nice and sharp, but the fronds themselves are all sort of angled at various different angles as they go along the leaflet. 
um, I've done my best with it. I don't want to go anything over F11 because the vegetation underneath the frond is starting to show in the image. So it's a it's a bit of a balance balancing act really in terms of getting the best you can from it without showing the messiness of the of the woodland floor beneath it. But it's a really nice image. I'm quite pleased with it. I'm very critical um, with how many of the fronds I'm, I'm allowing to, to show in the image. Some people like more, some people like less. But um, but for me, I've got one, two, three, four main ribs in there, and it looks absolutely beautiful. Really happy with that. And if I don't get anything else today, that'll do me. This is a buckler fern, by the way, and you can tell that because on the on the frond itself, you've got a main central rib, and then you've got a leaflet that comes out. Now that leaflet divides three more times, so that's what they call three times pin eight, and that that's a buckler fern. It's one of the buckler fern varieties. There's several um, different species within the buckler fern family, and this is probably the broad buckler fern. But yeah, lovely subject. Nice start to the morning. So I've managed to find here by the riverbank a lovely group of ramsons. Now to be fair, it's probably a little bit late in the season for these. The leaves are quite um, tatty to say the least, but I've searched around and I've found a nice grouping where the flower heads um, are in really nice condition. And as much as I look through the viewfinder, I can't see any areas where there's damage to the petals. I mean, there's an awful lot of them, but I can't see any damages yet. And any slight damage that I do find later on, I can just spot out um, with the clone tool if need be. So what I've done for a composition point of view is I've focused on one single, basically the head of the flower, and uh, I've used that as my main focal point, and I've let the rest of the flowers recede into softness. So at the moment I'm, I'm on F8 and I'm on a 50th of a second, and uh, that's just enough um, to, to, to arrest any movement that we've got. I'm using a, um, a remote release as well, cable release, um, just so that I don't cause any vibrations on the on the camera. Um, and what I've done is I've focused on the very, very tips of the stamens so that I still get the tips of the petals in sharp focus as well. I don't want to go in again like I did with the fern. I don't want to go too far with the depth of field because I don't want to show the leaves behind. And I think from this one, I quite like the softness, the way that the rest of the flowers go into softness in the distance. And this this main group in here, which I fought, which I positioned on the left down a third of the frame, is all nice and sharp. And then it sort of leads your eye into the softness beyond. But yeah, lovely shot. So I'm going to take that now, pop it on, get ready, and zoom in. Press the button at the back there so I can really zoom in to the centre of the flower and sharpen it up nicely. And then as soon as that breeze stops moving, I can grab the shot. Just a couple of minutes ago, there was some light just hitting the tops of the flowers, but I am able to shade those little patches with my hand if I need to. But at the moment, um, the sun is actually behind a big oak tree in the background, so I can get that. Yeah, really nice shot. Second shot of the day. It just goes to show I'm only about 100 yards from the car and already I've got two nice images. Just got to keep your eyes open for them. So to finish off, I was walking along the footpath here and uh, I happened to come across this really wet um, marshy patch um, where the water's just running down off the hillside and there's water horsetails just growing out of the embankment here so they're really easy to get to. But what I noticed was that 
uh, overnight or whether it's rain or whether it's dew but the, the, the tips of the actual um, the, the, the spikes that come out from the centre of the, the horsetail are full of, of just dewy droplets so I've gone with my 100mm macro I've gone in as close as I can possibly get to get one to one um, magnification and I've focused on just a small number of these droplets and used f2.8 now it really is a very very abstract scene I have no idea whether it's going to translate very well on a computer monitor but looking at it on the back of the screen here it looks really nice I've got some droplets that just form a nice diagonal and each one of them has got a spot of water on it now like I said 2.8 is what I've gone for but I have taken a couple of images at um, f5.6 and f8 but the problem with that is that the central rib of the horsetail starts to creep into sharp focus now I really don't want that what I'm trying to achieve is where the the, the, the little spikelets that come out from the center just sort of just going out to um, sharp focus as they recede into the distance so it's all about shapes and form this shot but um, certainly on the back of the camera it looks really nice I'm quite happy with it um, but I think that's it I think I'm done um, it's getting quite late now the light's getting a little bit harsh where the, where, the, uh, where the light's coming down through the canopy it's creating some very very hot spots and it's, it's not that appealing so I've got three shots I've certainly got two that I like um, if I get this one and it works it's a bonus um, so yeah I think I'm done I can head back I'm quite pleased with just a couple of hours work and uh, hopefully three nice images in the bag so as always if you've enjoyed the film please subscribe give me a big thumbs up um, leave some comments below let me know what you think and I'll see you all again soon in the very near future. Bye for now.